I didn't feel. I'm nothing. feeling. I'm shaking. Right now. No. Oh my God! What's happening right now? We're talking. Uh, some people can feel earthquakes. Some people can't. This is about the earthquakes. Sweat. We were just talking about earthquakes in we New York and Los Angeles, and Teddy's oh. now thinking he's feeling an earthquake. Right now. There's one earthquake. The earthquakes keep happening. It's, essentially, it's like sympathy pains. Is there such thing of it for like <laughs> the like news? A phantom, like I need a afterwards. I need a corner to walk. Sympathy natural disasters. I need right. a corner to run in you. I, 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 oh God! I think. I, well, I've been feeling the earthquakes ever since the ones in New York and California. Mm. I've been feeling them every single day ever yeah. since then. Jesus Multiple Christ. times per day. After trim, after trim. He almost drowned in his bathtub during the last tsunami. Oh my oh god, god, it was horrifying. Oh I kept, I was eating noodles. Uh, really? What? Was, well, <laughs> I, was, I was eating noodles. What does that have to do with the tsunami? Well, you know, I got my Japanese appreciation. Oh Jesus fucking! But Christ. yeah, the the water. I mean, the the tub kept flowing. And I blocked up the little hole so it was spilling into the bathroom. Donna, you're gonna have to clean that up. You're, you're gonna get mold. What? Oh, you did that at her place. I had her place though. You I almost drowned there oh, too. God. Oh yeah, I've drowned a couple times almost. Because of noodles or what? what you're just saying noodles because of Japanese. Because of tsunamis. Mess. Drowning is. You know tsunamis don't just happen in Japan, right? I mean tsunamis don't happen not in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. But no, I I literally just I uh oh, God. I'm really glad that uh, that earthquake stopped. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure our listeners, yeah. our fans, listen to it. Are you getting your bearings? I'm, I'm, glad, you, I'm bearings. glad your sympathy right. natural disaster your has subsided. Got in my bearings. Thank you so much, Bobby. Hey, absolutely. Bobby, that's actually a really, really wonderful sweet thing for me. Hey. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. You're easily pleased. So. I wish people would be more uh, grateful that I, when I ended mm -hmm. my sympathy natural disaster uh, things. Uh, more often. Yeah. I mean, but anywho, yeah, no. You got Donna, anything Donna, to say? You got anything to say that, Donna? Are you doing a It's My Life? No, you know, no, no. And I was thinking about it a lot, and oh. I have, um, I have one I want to run by. Thinking about what? A uh, catchphrase. Oh, no, I, I was thinking like, about I the had catchphrase. I an idea, and I was, do you guys? Can it's you my know, life. It's my life. Isn't good enough for you? No, it's just not natural. All right. It's not natural. So I thought maybe I could just run this oh, by yeah. you. I mean, if hers is better, you don't get any cut of the t-shirt sales. All right, let's see what she's got to say. I better something stupid. Right, I, I, I'm, I'm sure anything she could say right. is gonna beat. It's my life. It's my life. <laughs> yeah, Donna, what? go ahead. Would you? All right, calm Donna, down? Donna, Donna. No. All right. It is. My mom's. I don't. You know. Oh. What? Uh, oh my god! Native American. Okay. Oh my god! Donna, please stop. Okay. I'm not done. Oh my god! No, no, no. Wait. I think you. I think you're done. I think you're done. I think you're done. Oh what? my god! I, I think no, you're done. Donna, Donna, please. I'm back in the room now. Please, oh my god. please don't do it. Don't, don't do it. What the absolute fuck oh my is wrong with you? I'm crying. That no, was so it. scary. Oh my god! You fogged up my glasses. I haven't seen Teddy cry since <sighs> last week. Wow. But yeah, Donna, what the absolute fuck is wrong with you? I, Donna, you didn't have to talk that way about those people. They're they're, they're victims though. I think you guys have been spending way too much time together. Jesus Christ. Okay, and, well, uh, that can't, we, we cannot allow her. Right, well, we cannot no, allow I, her to make that I her, her, her catchphrase. No. I hear you. No, I'm you cannot put, you can't put any workshop, of that on the Don't tell shirt. anybody else what, what, you what, what, you what, what you just said to us. What? We can't let even, I can't, no, no. What? Oh my God. What? Oh wow. my God, I'm shaking. Yeah, I see. I'm, I'm still shaking. You okay? <laughs> oh my God. You gonna be all right? Yeah, I think I'm all right. Let's just get the episode started, please. I just wanna get, we'll talk about John Bonet and a fucked up family. Please send her any of this. Please. You okay? Episode 16, Bobby. Yeah, episode 16. Episode we, we 16, Donna. We made it. Yeah. Oh, God, okay, your Donna. voice. Donna, can you see the computer with those fucking sunglasses on? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. I'm just making sure. I can read the letters. She I just want to make sure you're able to do your job. I wear sunglasses. Uh, you're pretty like a days ago. She's a liar right, and, and she's right. unreliable. She's well, an unreliable I feel narrator. Like I'm just working for free and like it's fine. I give you twenty dollars like, each time. An asshole, I give you twenty dollars like, each time. If you don't want to do this, don't do it. Fun. Yeah, we don't really want you to be here either. That's not what I said. Teddy. What do you even know here? Bobby told me all the time. Teddy, he said he I can't say, stand her. And the moment that. she starts talking about money, is the moment that I, she gets to cut. And yes, what you just did, you stupid fucking bitch. What? You just started talking about money, and we're gonna cut you out of this episode. I don't want you even around me. You're and the things you said were unforgivable. That was disgusting. I. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if there's a jihad put on you. Talk about shit and we eat. <laughs> All Did you right. put a curse on me? I might put a curse on you. Is that the oh expression? Shit and we eat. 
shit when you eat. I sometimes, well, sometimes you have to. It's I think like, you eat when you, if you have a, Yours is If you have a bowl, you need to use it as a chamber pot. Yeah, but I, but make sure to clean it out before you make your ramen. Chamber pot. Hey, oh, my yeah. God. Oh, yeah, I've had poop in my nose. Good God, Ted. I've had poop in my nose. Sounds like he's been oh taking shits in your bowls. Bobby, yeah. remember that time? That's why you said I'm not allowed to eat Italian food with you. You went to that Italian restaurant the other night, and you didn't let me go because you said, no, You sometimes you eat poop in your noodles. And that's... I just, I don't want you to shit where we're eating. You literally said that. Oh. Uh, no, uh, I said, hey, let's go to Fazoli's. And you're like, perfect. I'm going to make my poop noodles. And I said, absolutely not. What the hell is poop noodles? Uh, I didn't say, uh, no. It's, that that sounds a little bit more. Yeah, I think it paints me a little more like a reasonable person. Uh, yeah. I mean, I like the breadsticks. I can't make poop, <laughs> I can't make poop sticks. But yeah. I can make. Hey, maybe I, stop eating poop. If you go to a restaurant, you don't gotta eat poop. Prefer. Why are you eating yeah. poop? It's a source of fiber. Like a poo poo platter? It's it, a poo poo platter. <laughs> uh, you invent that, you fucking bitch. I can't We always it. need oh something to cut. So. She's always down with this. Got something to say. All right, it's everybody's okay. gotta stop talking over each other. Well, Bobby, I'm just waiting for. I don't know what to talk about. I'm, I'm, get, I'm trying to get there. Episode 16. Episode 16. Episode 16. Here we are. Congratulations, everybody. Cheers. We, Cheers. Just, did, uh, Cheers. we just did the John one. Uh, <laughs> some of you have uh, already let us know how you feel. Uh huh. And we appreciate great. the feedback. We love knowing that there are people out there who uh, will not run on the other side of the street away from us in public. Sure. Well, I just mean not, I mean, just watching the show and then engaging. We really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. And so we're going to get to that. We've got a fan mail segment uh, coming up here. Oh. But first, we want to do a bit of news that we uh, just, you know, kind of, we had too much going on in the last episode, so we failed to mention it. Oh, yeah. But uh, the John Andrew Ramsey uh, on Reddit has blocked our, our Reddit account. John <gasps> Andrew Ramsey. John no. Andrew Ramsey, yeah. We've never interacted with him. John <laughs> Patrick We've Ramsey never interacted with him. I mean, we mentioned us. his account on the show. No. Yeah. Wow. We mentioned, mentioned his account. account. It's a yeah. public account. Oh, my yeah. God. It's like, a public... Wait, like, junior or senior? Huh? John Andrew Ramsey, he is the son of oh, John wait, yeah, Ramsey. Yeah, 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 and when it yeah, first yeah. happened, yeah, we yeah, thought... Yeah. When it first happened, I was like, oh, my God, he nuked the whole account. And so <gasps> yeah. we put it on our Patreon, and then E4 is here, another great member. We mentioned him last episode. We're going to get him on here. yeah. Yeah. He mentioned to us that... Or he... Uh, mentioned he or she we got to talk to you we don't know we, we don't know you we yet. don't check gender and that's fine yeah we don't even know everybody they mentioned that uh uh <coughs> go on <laughs> sorry <laughs> they mentioned that john andrew ramsey's account was still active on there they could still see him which oh. means that john andrew ramsey just blocked oh, wow, his that's why, okay yeah. he oh. blocked yeah. all right all we had to do is sign out and oh, we could um, still see oh, wow. yeah, his account I mean, so. or is he scared but whatever helps him sleep at night oh. yeah Whatever yeah. helps him get through. Uh, but thank you for bringing that to our attention. This here. year where things, revelations is made. He, yeah. I, I mean, he can choose to do whatever he wants to do. It's, well, it's yeah. a free And we've country. shown that. Like, and what know, he chose to do was block his block We've shown before him. with his old Reddit post that he's not very informed on the case. And yeah. he's willing to call out bullshit to somebody on Reddit. Mm. And when they back it up with facts, he doesn't respond. Like, it's embarrassing that that comment's still up for him. Yeah. I think it speaks to how the family doesn't talk. Yeah. Like, how he doesn't know what's going on in the family. Because that specific reference, again, was about the fat cats. Mm -hmm. And, like, he doesn't know what's going on. I mean, the, you know, the reason why you don't see him on TLC, except for the fact that they keep Well, he's going to be, and it's because they don't talk about subject to tonight's episode. Wow. Burke Ramsey, the only other kid in the house. Brent Ra Burke yeah. Ramsey. They don't put him out in the media. No, and he is. We're and we're really going to dissect, you know, mm -hmm. how Burke could have done it. And uh, it's gonna be a great, uh, it's gonna be a great episode. We gotta be careful using the word dissect because I'm sure he dissects things. Yeah, himself. he's a, he's a, you know, I'm not, we, you we know, got a lot, we got a lot. Just my opinion, just my opinion, just my commentary. He's kind of a little weirdo, you know. So he's a little, not my, he's a little, you know, not everybody grows up uh, with a dead sister. <laughs> Oh he was weird before. That doesn't necessarily make him weird. I think he was. Yeah, he, thank you, Don. Yeah, he was yeah, weird right. before. He didn't really oh, seem very moved by it, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we'll show the little. The little yeah, yeah, we'll, we got we'll all kinds. We'll of, we got all but, kinds you know, of. The behavior is interesting too, because another thing we want to highlight too Burp. is I just recently I really love like true crime and stuff. And on HBO uh -huh. Max right now, they he got knows. one on the... Donnie, you watched it too, right? It's called The Lake Erie Murders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lake Erie oh what? God, yeah. Lake, Lake Erie, Erie Murders. Murders. Yeah, it's a really good one. It's about the search for this missing girl. And it was uh, five years before John Bonet, too. Yeah. Is that... The there was no note, though, but there were, like, weird phone calls. Oh. But there's a uh, this segment very early on where the police suspect that, you know, the parents possibly did it. Oh. And so we're going to play this here. And this is how a father really should... A, father, a whole family, whatever, when they're faced with this kind of investigation. Yes. How they should feel. This is how you should react. How you should this react. Is what they should have done. We began doing those things that you would typically do in a kidnap case. Neighborhoods, uh, talking to the family at length. Agents descend on the Mihalovic home to interrogate the family. The family was very upset. Margaret was crying. Mark was very silent. 
was difficult to engage them in, in searching the house uh, for obvious reasons that you know that they didn't know where Amy was they didn't believe she was at home and why the police are searching my house but if the family's not involved if you always want to rule that out completely they would take Margaret to one area of the house so we couldn't collaborate or come up with the same stories they were trying to eliminate Margaret and I and there's no doubt about it and that's what you have to do in a case like this. You have to start eliminating people. And that makes sense. Yeah. You know, wow. they just got to gotta get it cleared out of the way. You know, it's and a formality. And also, it's like, whatever I can do to that's help. That's so genuine. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. So wait, this is a reboot of the Drew Carey shows? Is that Mimi's dad? No, that is not. Oh. No. Well, it was like Erie. That's where Cleveland is. Whatever right? happened to Mimi? Cleveland rocks. Whatever Mimi. Mimi. Whatever happened to Mimi? Whatever happened With a big blue I know eyes. for, you know, <laughs> the first, like, when I didn't watch Drew Carey and I always saw, like, the commercials and stuff, uh -huh. I thought it was, like, a weird... Uh, Nutty Professor type situation where that was also Drew Carey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand the show. <laughs> He's playing both these roles. It looked kind of like him in the face. It's like Jack and Joe, Adam Sandler, but like 10 years, 20, <laughs> 20 years at a time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that show was very progressive. His sister was a transvestite. I'm sorry? Or his brother. That wasn't, no. Drew Carey show. Mimi? Are you Mimi about married Mimi? the transvestite. Was his not name a was transvestite. Steve. He dressed up like a woman. What are you talking Drew about? Drew Carey's brother's dressed up like a woman. Uh, I don't know if he identified as a woman, but he dressed up <laughs> as a woman. That's why I, I, that's why I use the word transvestite. Oh, Drew Carey's in actual life. I thought you were talking about the show. No, show. I'm talking about the fucking show, Bobby. You never watched Drew Carey, did you? Oh yeah, he was. No, oh, you're huh? right. The tall guy, the, the Zodiac tall killer, guy. the Zodiac killer, the Zodiac killer. Yeah. Oh man, I love that movie. Zodiac. That's a great movie, Jake. Hold on. Robert Johnny Jr. Yeah. He is amazing. That's right. We want he, that same ending really for this case. We just want to get there and be like, yeah, look, yeah. Maybe like we want to like. Get there, and then it was like, oh, but look, he's getting hard. Teddy hands him a napkin. They yeah. open it up. It's got his poop in it. Uh, serial killers get hard when you find out their guilt. That's like the one. Yeah, one. that's the tell. You got to like and look Teddy's at And Teddy's a good at, at bumping into strangers. Oh, yeah. I know when the dick's <laughs> swelling checking. up. Just <laughs> checking. I know when it's sponging up. Sponging and, uh, with blood. Sorry. I'm sorry? What? Sponging with blood. What are we talking about? So we were talking about Lake so Erie Murders. Talking, that was a wonderful way for that guy to yeah. Yeah. And then that was something I'd watched. And then, you know, something else I just recently watched, too, <laughs> like. was that the that, that great resource for information out here, the Ramsey case, which I'll put a little card here so you can go right to their channel. Uh, they have uh, published the entire CBS miniseries movie about the JonBenet case called Perfect Murder, Perfect Town. There's always evil that hides in this world based off that book and people bring up that book all the time they do but like people also kind of like i mean they don't really like him or trust him but it was an interesting movie in that it really uh i mean it presents both sides it really just focuses on like the police investigation side of it oh people have complained there's too many characters in it but it's you know it's a there's a great cast in there oh and i haven't seen it it's I pretty good it's pretty good it's who pretty plays good. patsy ramsey's mark Helben helgenberger mark helgenberger of ncsi i think she was just csi what? Isn't it just CSI? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't it's gone just to a CSI. doctor. Yeah. Either way, she was a pretty good patsy. Okay. Um, you know, Chris Christopherson's loose mitt. Every day I stop here and pray for John Bonet. And every day I ask for God's help in solving this crime. Amen. Makes him look way cooler than he should be. I know. That's pretty crazy. My loose mitt would be Ed Harris. Pay. Ed Harris sending out the call now. Oh, yeah. Ed Harris, and especially Ed Harris without hair, is a great loose mitt. Yeah, well, I wouldn't tell him to be like, hey, like, keep don't your, do anything. Keep, <laughs> keep your I'm head sure up. if he Googled a picture, it'd be like, oh, I got it. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> you know how much money it takes for us to make bald men look bald in Hollywood? Millions. No. Anyway. A lot of makeup. I, think, I would definitely. I mean, I Chris Christopherson, uh, he wrote The Rainbow Connection. No. Yes. I think it's Jim Kermit, Henson. Like the frog? The Jim Henson? Connection? Oh, Chris Christopherson, I think they were in a thruple oh, for a while. With Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Jim Henson and Kermit? No, 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 oh, no. Miss Kermit, Piggy. Miss Piggy, and Chris Christopherson. I think you're again having a fever dream or something. No, no. You're confusing an episode you saw as a child. No, I'm not talking about in the episodes. I'm talking about the real people. Yeah. The real Muppet people. Yeah, that's just Jim Henson. Remember, there are that's just real Jim Muppets. Muppets. The, okay, yeah, not the There are Muppet people. They have unions. They have families. Oh, the people that work the puppets? Yeah, the, the puppets are the Muppets. The they oh. live in, uh, I mean, maybe because you're not from a big city, but <laughs> they are all around. And like I said. Teddy's never left the city. There are speakeasies with Muppets and they perform. You know, there's a whole sex like, trafficking thing. I mean, it's all about them getting as the full rights but they're real people you know um like the actor who played elmo who got arrested i mean his real name was um yeah what, what the fuck are you his real name was Debo. okay 
Just because I said Chris Christopherson plays Lou Smith. I'm saying so in real life, Chris Christopherson dated Miss Piggy and Kermit. Okay. And they were a throuple for years. They How went to like Andy Warhol, Studio 51. Uh, they were there. <laughs> It's not like he's walking around the club with oh Muppets. God. They were doing drugs, Bobby. Okay, they but were, just they saying were, that they it's were like, tongue kissing. Okay, but oh everybody God. saw it. He's not tongue kissing the Muppets. Though. He was tongue kissing Muppet Pe Miss Peggy Don't and Kermit. The, the people that play it. Stop saying that. Don't You're ruin putting the a picture in their people's head. The Chris Christopherson's at the like in the booth with two fucking like Kermit That's the exactly the picture that I am painting. <laughs> That's what the real reality Peter is. Gallery. You go to the grocery uh, store. If I go to like, or you know, I go to like some sort of like, you know, like a breakfast place in New York or something. Uh, like I'm gonna be in line <laughs> with like mostly human beings, and then like once in a blue moon, like a, like a couple blue muppets, and it's just one of those things where they like soup out of bread bowls too. They they gotta pay their taxes too. They gotta pay more taxes. Who are they, what and they the don't get fuck? to vote. Like, what the fuck, fuck are you talking about? about? I'm talking about the state what of laws with know. muppet people. You know, you know, we can just change the subject. I'm just letting yeah, you know. Oh, maybe go back to the subject we were talking about before you went down this nightmare that alley. She likes to take it in both holes. What? She likes to take it in both holes from. She likes Who? To, with I? Miss Piggy. Shut the fuck oh. up! Oh my God! Stop oh. talking about Miss Piggy. Oh. That's oh. what well, Chris Christopherson and Kermit love her. Oh Teddy. my fucking God! All right, all right. Are all you two right. competing for like the worst? No, like, what she said earlier was uh, uh, heinous. That was terrible. Oh my God! I'm shaking again. Oh, great. He's having his tremors again. Oh, my fucking you know, God. I am definitely going to shit on your fucking floor when we get back home. I swear to God. Look at me in the eye. Look at me in the eye now. <laughs> I'm going to shit on your floors. All right. All right. Anywho, perfect, perfect Murder. Perfect, perfect Murder, Perfect Town. Yeah. Really good movie. Mark Murder. It's a good movie, and it really, I mean, it like highlights kind of like an insight of just how confusing and what was going on with like the actual detectives in the DA's office. And oh, like, okay. there's kind of a reporter in the center of it. Jeffrey I'm sorry, Shapiro. Bobby. Can you not shake your fucking water shit? Yeah, what the what? fuck? Are you well, doing? Why, why? Are you doing that? why are you doing that? She's right so on fucking disrespectful. <sighs> All right, we were talking about Jeffrey Shapiro. He was a reporter for the Globe at that time, okay? Jeffrey Shapiro. And he's the guy that kind of got in the middle of the whole case where he ended up getting in with Alex Hunter early on. And he had like oh. almost daily visits with him. Oh, he got yeah. in really good with him. And then he also Talking would try to, to the DA. Mm -hmm, and then he would try to talk to Steve Thomas. And Steve Thomas was like, hey, come to us first if you oh. find stuff. You know, he was instead, working both instead, angles. Once they that. find out, he's talking to Alex Hunter. Because originally they just dismiss him. And then he's like, well, I'm, I'm sure Alex Hunter will want it. And mm. they're like, oh, what? Sit down, short around. Like, you talk to Hunter about this case. Awesome. Every day. I mean, sometimes I spend hours in his office. Bull. Well, what, what else do you and Hunter talk about? You name it. Other interesting possibilities. We just sit around and hash out different theories. Which are what kind of theories? Variations on the intruder possibilities. <clears throat> Jeff, you're beautiful. I'll tell you what. You have another good idea? You come to us. You might get better action. Let's, wow. Like, why don't you come to us first? Uh -huh. it's like, He's geez. like Jake Gyllenhaal Nightcaller, but with but like way less of... charisma. Yeah, yeah it's the, yeah. It's, you know, he's a goofy guy from Twister. Ben Shapiro. No, Jeffrey Shapiro. Jeffrey Shapiro. Well, I mean, he's actually a pretty noted journalist now. Oh uh, god. So he's pretty. He's doing pretty good. But they paint him at the end of the movie as like, uh, you know, he's like he's working as like a substitute teacher now. Following his resignation from the Globe newspaper, Jeff Shapiro remained in Boulder, Colorado, and recently worked as a substitute teacher. And this movie came out like the 2000, okay? Uh -huh. And it's also when the grand jury thing had finished, so they paint the thing as like at the end where Alex Hunter comes out and gives the, the announcement that the Ramses are cleared. Uh and then like the Ramses are crying on the couch together watching it, like on TV, and it's like, oh, oh good, my. they're innocent. Boulder grand jury has completed its work and will not return. No charges have been filed. The grand jurors have done their work extraordinarily well, bringing to bear their legal powers, life experiences, and shrewdness. And it's like, okay, well, then we find out, like, what, 2013, 13 years later? That, uh -huh. like, oh, no, the grand jury voted to indict. Yeah, they went and they said, this is all cover up. We gotta make our own ending to gets that away movie. With that? Who gets away with what? Like, what they're not gonna indict? No, Wait. Donna, they're not gonna indict. They didn't indict. <laughs> God. How many episodes? Is it? No, you no. I don't want to know that answer. All right. Yeah, I All mean, right. these movies sound really interesting, and that's the thing. There was a lot of media. There was a lot of media at that time that, uh, and to this and day, and they paint them bad in this, where it's like they're, uh -huh. they're, they're like you know looking through their back window and shit. Patsy's Crazy. basically crying in every scene. Thought she did a good job when I first watched it because uh -huh. I was watching on my couch, and then I saw some clips up close when I was pulling it for this, and uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it anymore. I, think I mean, just... the little bits you play that I've heard, like they, that sound really. 
She just sounds pretty good. It just, you know, also sounds like kind of a melodramatic and over the top. <laughs> Bring her back. Bring her back to life. I also think that that's what how Patsy Ramsey would behave. That's true. Alex yeah. Hunter's played by this guy from uh, he's on Thirty Rock. He plays like the, oh, yeah, the big boss. It's so good. But uh, oh, it's a good cast. John Heard. Mm. John Heard is in it. John Heard. Home Alone. Sopranos. Oh yeah. R.I.P. He's recently he, dead. He, right? Vic Vic Marquezian in season one that's of right. The Sopranos. Sopranos he's in more than one season, show. right? Huh? He's only one season. He's only one season. Damn, I didn't yeah. realize that. Oh, he huh? jumps off that dam. All right, damn. Spoilers. Damn. Bro. Some people damn. are still getting through it. Jumped off the dam. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's So, so yeah, Perfect Murder, Perfect Town. Watch it. Uh, Ramsey Case Channel has the full thing up. Or don't. <laughs> or don't, yeah. Yeah, I, don't I mean, it just... I mean, it's made at a time where, again, you already know, it's like 2000, we don't even know that the grand jury chose to die. And that's literally the <laughs> climax of that movie. Yeah. How long I is mean, it? How long? It's like two it's hours. Three, it's three hours and like 15 minutes. Don't mind. It's Jesus. a Titanic. Oh, you know, what's that? A Titanic. The Titanic of a Both panic. of them end with a train wreck, or like a boat wreck. <laughs> a train wreck. At- the Titanic, Sorry, Donna the gave boomer animals. panic. Um, okay, well, that honestly, I, I mean, I now Lake Erie murders. That's definitely not Drew Carey, and Perfect Murder, Perfect Town's got Ma Um, We should make a new one. Oh, there is new. We should. We should. That's what I said. I want to make a new one. Yeah. We everybody go ahead and support John Benet on Patreons and YouTube and Spotify's and Apple Apple's music, and go ahead and just you know we are gonna we're gonna make a movie. <laughs> we're gonna make them. We're gonna make these. Oh no, we're not crowdfunding a movie. Absolutely not. We're not gonna crowdfund, but we're gonna. No, but you can support us. You can support us so that we get to can... the point where we got something called in the entertainment industry leverage, where it's like, wow, look <laughs> at me. I've got access to. You like, have ins. I'm sorry. I'm like, wait, it's like, oh, people like us, and these people like they support like our storytelling. You know what I mean? Well, they know how to tell That's stories. That's your in. Like, what are you talking about? How is that an in? They like they like how I sound all the time. You know, the no, they don't. There are dozens, hundreds of people. There's, I mean, there's that, nobody that said that specifically. I get letters all the time, Bobby. I mean, you we've don't had get a couple lettuce? comments. We've had a couple comments that are, you know, not that. But that's hey, we're gonna do a fan mail segment. So you gotta yeah, find let's out. see. Let's read some of those comments that are that. I didn't really pull out anything that was supposed to be about your voice, so oh, unless you want to see a bad comment like that. No, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not anybody up. talking about me. Man, nothing. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. So much mail. Shut up, Donna. Oh my God. Shut Sorry. God. That should be my catchphrase. All right. Well, hey, I thought this one was going to be prevalent for this episode. So the first fan mail uh, we got is from Rogers Palace. Uh, and uh, his, uh, his stance right off the bat, we're going to say is I still firmly believe Burke has no idea what his parents did. But I can't say he didn't know that par- both parents were doing some kind of abuse to her. Oh. So that's a hot take. Hot Interesting. take. Interesting. We're Rogers, you know, we love you. you yeah. I mean, you always make us, you make my, you make my brain turn on. Yeah. And you know, that's I start a weird to way do, to say that. Yeah, I start bad. to tahinkin. Yeah. Thank you. That's a really weird way to say that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, hey, Red Raven Spirit commented on the uh, Patsy uh, Part 2 episode and said, this episode was brilliant. You have made an undeniably strong case against Patsy writing the ransom note. And if Patsy wrote the ransom note, then there was no intruder, allegedly. Wink face. Aww. Love Aww. you, Red Raven Spirit. Yes, yes. Very true. Thank you, Ravenclaw. Aww. Red Raven Spirit. Red Raven Spirit. Yeah. All right, some more positive feedback here uh, from uh, E4 is here. This is one of the first ones we heard from them was, uh, I've listened to the entire series so far. You guys are great. It's hilarious, oh. entertaining, and still informative. Oh. Donna is a nice addition, too. Keep it going. Oh, Wow. Oh, what do you oh, think about that, Teddy? That's a fantastic review. Oh, Feedback from some per- person. Oh, Thank you. That they, just drives you crazy. They were right about so much. Sure, yeah. And we'll let's bring us back down here. Donald Rice, 5281. Oh, I know him. I love him. Yeah, sure. Well, he goes, uh, he, he writes, you sound like a bunch of high strung thumb suckers. Uh, high strung? What the fuck does that mean? That doesn't even mean. <laughs> that's crazy. I think that's kind of funny. I think that's funny. It's great I feedback. Thank you I so actually, much. I like it. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, he did keep watching because uh, he did recently. He's a comment. family friend. Yeah. Well, he guess what? He keeps. Uh, he went ahead and commented uh, just recently. Yeah. Uh, again, Donald Rice writes. Everybody in Boulder knows this Satan worshiper did it. 
This is in reference to John's episode. It was a satanic ritual sacrifice. All the evidence points to it, as well as all the subsequent cover-up by the police and FBI. Oh, I don't know. Oh, so I guess different. the police and FBI helped cover John's murder because it was all like, hey, we all made a deal with Satan. Uh, yeah. Uh, so thank you, Donald D. Rice. Your opinion is just less than uh, a spearing high strung thumbs up. I've never seen, I, you know, can someone show me a picture of the devil? Has anybody ever taken a picture? All these people that are worshiping the devil. I don't know. You if, think he would show up a couple was, times? He'd be like, you know, there'd be some photo of a Polaroid of him in the 80s, like doing a bong rip off of like fucking, uh, I don't know, like John John Candy's, you know, uh, um, bubble butt. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to wait longer than it should have. <laughs> If what Donna said earlier was uh, was correct, then I'm sure she's seen a picture of the devil. So, mm, yeah. Jesus fucking Christ! Thanks, Unky. Damn. Dude, what the fuck was that? I get the chill. Well, hey, Libby Stark commented on our 60 Minutes special. She says most definitely the Ramsey family was all involved and all knows what happened that night. Period. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So thank you so much. You yeah. Know, I appreciate it when people have strong opinions. I like it. I agree with us. You know. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All know. right. And then you know what else? We got Bob Olke. Uh, they write, are you people for real? <laughs> <laughs> I ask myself that every day. No, this is actually like the first uh, AIA generated podcast. Yeah. All this is, yeah. none of this is real. Nothing is real. Honestly, none of your reality is real. None of your reality is real mm -hmm. when you really start to ask, uh, you start to apply those filters and, and those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially yeah. since I know your social yeah. security number is two nine. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> see and Ooh. that it, we're good and and that's the thing like the, the, oh, this is an age of magical supernatural power <laughs> and it's especially in the <laughs> even the one could consider AI as its own collective consciousness yeah and I don't you know I don't want them to elaborate at all <clears throat> no I don't know I want to know it's like I, I like that they just made me question my reality too yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I, am I for real I don't know am I for real very good question that's a question for me to see yeah <laughs> Sorry, I guess that yeah, brought it down a little bit. But hey, to bring us back up, we got a really Bobby. Donna, right. Donna's I'm keep kicking it. Oh, it's me. It's just a speaker. It's not the mic. The mics it's are good. It's not my fault. Oh, Teddy. And so, it's not me all the time. <laughs> it's my life. It's not me. It's all my the life. Time. It's my what? life. It's not me all the time. Her no, new song. That's better. Me. It's not me all the time. It's not that's me. That's your new catchphrase. I love it. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna sell I guess it. It's better than no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Are you sure? I Can we just end the episode? We done with the fan mail. But Donna, Wait. get out of here. No, 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 we're not done with the fan mail. We I'm gotta, about to start spinning. I'm about to run in circles. We gotta end on a better note than that. All the right. Fan mail. I'm sorry. So hey, uh, Kelly Jaquin. I hope I'm saying that right because she's a great fan of the show, and yeah. you know she's been she's been commenting a lot on it, and we love you so much. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Kelly. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah. Consider joining the Patreon. Uh, she wrote, I liked, subscribed, and shared, watched every episode twice, and now I can't wait for more. Hearts. Oh, my God. Oh, See, all, so everybody, even the people who say funny things to us, everybody, I love them all. Yeah, They're that so wonderful. Funny. We appreciate you listening. You should keep on listening because this is the thing. Entertainment and, and information is supposed to be delivered in a way in which it changes and, uh, your life forever by changing what you previously thought before you were um, encountered it by it. Well, you don't have to go that far. You could be entertained by it. Well, though. it's like sometimes I wonder if you're in a search bar and you're typing in, like you're looking for something as a viewer and you find something and, you, <laughs> and then you watch it and you listen to it. In another dimension, is that piece of a media search and it putting you in a search bar? And and what and watching you? I'm too high for this. Are you talking about are you talking about alternate reality Google again? I'm just talking about the what's AIs. real, what's not real. And I think I think our art helps make more real the revelation mm -hmm. and the revolution that will come of learning who definitively I think it already killed has. John Bonet, right? I think it already has like changed stuff in that like once people find out that we are not real people and this is just AI, yeah. it's going to blow the fucking mouth. Oh my god. That's why we talk about robots all the time. No, because we are you hate robots. robots. I am a robot. <laughs> Teddy Ro robot robot. That's really good. I love to suck on toes. Nope. Yeah. No. Oh. Eat no. poop. Would uh, you trust a robot stuff? to suck your toes? Oh I'll suck some toes. No, would you trust a robot to suck some toes? Oh right. No. Oh. I would not trust a robot. No. Yeah, so what's a toe sucking robot kind of enjoyable. thing? It's you gotta put some raw meat in the robot's mouth. Why? Because otherwise you're gonna be feeling metal. Why not just make not make a robot that wants to suck toes? Why not just put a pound of ground beef in a robot's <laughs> mouth and put <laughs> the feet in it? 
I mean, it's not something incomprehensible. I'm not the first person to think about putting ground beef in a robot's mouth. For some yeah, point. but just to stop it from fucking toast. Guy. I think you are. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. this is the first time anyone's ever talked about this. Ever. What's up? I'm sorry. No, Go ahead and subscribe. Nothing. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. It's crazy, and honestly, I think it's a trauma response to what you did earlier, and I hope you never forget. What? It's not always my fault. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, is that what the thing was? She don't know. She don't know it's shit. Not- Let's start this episode. I'm excited. We're I don't think you should what- have a catchphrase anymore, honestly. No, no. She don't. She don't deserve one. We got to talk about yeah your Honestly, payment you arrangement. Honestly, you need to pay tithes to some fucking church or something. For I'm gonna have to bleep a lot that of shit that. Was t- please bleep. I don't all think I can say any of that. No, no, no. Please, God, no. I don't like it. We have right some now. decor. Man. Sorry, we're sorry. All right, wow, let's... guys. <clears throat> I thought we were gonna try and do something here. What are we at? I'm sorry, we are. Well, I, what are we wasting your time? Do you I, want your twenty bucks? It was so inhumane what she said. I, I think only a, a robot could. Job for this. Oh, did you? Because yeah. if they find out what you said, then you're not gonna have any job anyway. Look at me, I'm Donna. I we're do not it. Then I have anyways. money. <laughs> yeah, we're not. None of this is real. None Just of yell this that. Is real. That motherfucker <laughs> back there real. is it's not real. real. <laughs> He's got that demon face syndrome. We gotta right, get her right, on right. here. Yeah, I mean, it's just something to think about. Mm-hmm. But oh, I found the John Bonet on uh, Instagram. She's like a chef now. Oh, she's actually followed by like some pretty the like actress, noted chefs. What? The, John Bonet, the girl that played. the little girl that played it in Perfect Murder in Perfect yeah. Town. Oh, yeah, I want to see if she'll come on. I thought you meant it. like the real John Bonet and Ramsey. I'm like, no. oh, she makes a good fritter. She's not in it much, and she's definitely not the doll. But uh, the scenes oh, with her are pretty good. Oh, good. They for do her. a lot of flashbacks. She makes food. What's she doing? Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. I thought you were talking about John Bonet. <laughs> she makes good food. She makes good food. She she's a private chef. What yeah, she's it? a private chef. Sorry, Donna, get this gummy. She's very is private. Blowing me up here. She's very private. You cannot. She will not tell you how to boil anything. No, what are you talking about? Her whole channel is a good cooking channel. I'm just saying she's. We'll link that. We'll link that on the bottom. But I want. Yeah, I want. I want to. Uh, well, I'm glad somebody's doing something they love um, in in the midst of all this because the Ramsey family. I don't think they love where they're at now. Oh. And especially when it comes to Burt Ramsey. Burt. Burt. Burt, yeah. Burt. That's a good point. That's a good point. And that's mm-hmm. that's who we're going to explore in this episode. So that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if, I think we're ready, right? Let's get it started. Yeah, I'm, I was born ready. Yeah, you were. Yeah, were. We pop those glasses down. Let's we're going to ride. Oh, yeah. Shit, I don't have any. You ready? Ah, uh, whatever. We're going to ride. Uh, they down. always got the hat on, too. Uh, if you guys can see us. Teddy, you got to picture. Just imagine this episode is a motorcycle. And it's just a lot of. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Like That's what we're doing. Okay, all right, let's do this. And Teddy, Teddy made a song too, so we got a lot of we got a lot of good stuff. Oh yeah, I can't wait. All right, well, hey, are you ready to go? Uh huh. All right, well, I'm Bobby Pavlovsky, and I'm Teddy Ronald Reagan. This Mackia, and this is John Benet today. Did you consciously not draw John Bonet? I don't really remember what was going through my head, but she was gone, so I didn't draw her. All right, Burke <laughs> Ramsey. <bro. laughs> oh, Burke! <laughs> wow. wow, pathological. Yeah, that was his trial run to be uh, the next PR campaign spokesperson, and he definitely did not pass. <laughs> yeah, no. Wow. I'm, I mean, you know, what's the opposite of charming? Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, Uncom- unsettling. <laughs> yeah. All right. The good it, news. The good news is that if he's still painting family portraits and shit like that, or pay, or drawing them or whatever, uh, he's saving his, himself a lot of money. <laughs> on paint supplies because he doesn't paint John Bonet. No, you know he's right. just like no, nope, you know he yeah. probably doesn't paint Patsy anymore either. Right. It's just probably him and like John like in some sort of Adam touching the finger of God. His apartment's just filled with just different biblical pictures of him <laughs> and his family. Oh, crosses yeah. everywhere. Crosses everywhere. Yeah. Red Sea things. I want to know who in the family that like or what he's like with the family that somebody was like, yeah, he's gonna nail this. Like, let's let him go. Mm-hmm. Get in there. Or if there's like Everyone a specific. Had to be terrified. Patsy's dead at this oh, point, God. so she might not allow. Her little boy. Well, yeah. it's like, I also remember from that Dr. Phil episode, like how um, much Dr. Phil had to make so much stretch. Like, it's like he was only given, like, you have 20 minutes tops with Burke. And it's like, and, and so there was, there was like, he was using flashback footage from when he had talked to John Ramsey a year prior. And this was like around 2016, like something 2016. Like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and then also just like a, a bunch of other, like, you know, really dragging it out, talking about, you know. Well, he did two. There's two different scenarios, scenes you see them in. 
So it's like they did two separate interviews, it looks like. One's like in comfy couches and the other's oh, like yeah, that's right, right in front of that screen. Uh-huh. It could have just been the other side of the room, actually. Yeah, but so, even from that but they footage, did go on a walk, too. Yeah. We get some B-roll of you walking around like fucking Robert they Durst. They did. And the jinx. And it's weird how he had two. Muttering to yourself. Like he had two right feet. Like he was, Who? Um, Burr. He has two right feet. Burr? Who said that? Has two He's right got two feet? right feet. When they were walking, you could see that he had, he had two right feet. Like Eugene Levy is in Best of Show. Uh, we're gonna have to go to the tape on that one. Yeah, we can watch the tape. But 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 even with the footage they could get, which wasn't much, mm. they did not get a lot out of Burke that made him look like one. I don't know how to put it, like a regular person, like, like you know what I mean. Normal. Yeah. He did normal. not come off as normal at all. Uh-huh. No, and, do- like and not doc- a normal kid. Yeah, uh-huh. and Doctor Phil threw more like weird stuff on the fire again with that flashlight question, well, which Dr. we'll play Phil that clip. Was just, like feeding him stuff. Oh yeah, play like, that clip we're, again. We're, we're, here's that clip though. See, it's like, and it's like, that's the first time anyone in the case, it's never been mentioned before or after that there was a flashlight involved. But Burke doesn't directly refute it, you know? Uh He just goes to, you know. He didn't say like, but there wasn't a flashlight when my dad put me to bed. He doesn't say anything like that. Instead, he just says, I don't remember if I had a flashlight or not when I went downstairs to look Mm -hmm. at my presents. (laughs) And it's like, okay, in the dock. And it's kind of agreeing that (laughs) maybe, it's kind of agreeing then that Uh his dad did put him together with a flashlight. Uh Yeah, and it, and it makes me wonder, is this from something that maybe, like, maybe what if this was jo- uh, Dr. Phil's sneaky way of also, like, getting around an agreement that he had with John Ramsey or something, where it's like, he wasn't allowed to use that footage originally of, of John Ramsey maybe even admitting that he I'm had a flashlight. It. Yeah, but, I like that. But Dr. Phil was like, when I get Burke, or when, like, when that opportunity arose, yeah, mm-hmm. he was like... I'm gonna say your dad said blah blah blah. Just almost like it's almost like you know to keep the whisper of like an Olympic flame like alive mm-hmm. against a, a gale. And the flashlight's important in this case because again, it was left on the counter, oh, and yeah. it's a potential murder weapon. As mm-hmm. we'll go into that a little bit later too. But also, it's the weird thing where we have that footage of John not remembering that the flashlight's on the counter, mm-hmm. which is insane. Play that again. I'm playing it. I think they came into the house after we left. We're there when we came home. Waited till we fell asleep. One of our neighbors reported seeing a flashlight light in the kitchen around midnight, I believe. Um, the beam of flashlight shining. And there you go. Oh it's like God. acting uh, like you see him uh, remembering that the flashlight's there. Like, uh-huh. oh shit, that's a huge part of this case. And I was just like, neighbors uh-huh. said they saw flashlights. I go, oh, like you never put that together, motherfucker. Like that is a Clint Eastwood that's movie your, moment. And you know what? That's also it could have been a tell in the way of like that's him genuinely not being there. Right. As if it's the kids playing around, maybe, uh-huh. or you know, Patsy or yeah. somebody. But it's a thing of that's a, that's a, it speaks to John very much, maybe not being there for the murder. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And that it was something that was like a detail that was like, oh, fuck, like that should have been put away. Or he keeps telling on himself on accident. Like, oh, if he I wrote the note it. giving mm-hmm. them the pad. If he did something with the flashlights, mentioning it, like it's mm-hmm. a clue. Like, well, and like even an off chance, which like if he knew nothing about like the, you know, like who did it or that he wasn't involved in a cover up or maybe whatever. But like for him, like it almost looked like a moment where he realized, oh, wait, I don't know what I'm th- talking about. Like I'm learning that this is actually. Maybe, mm-hmm. if not my wife, if but maybe my own son mm-hmm. and his son Burke Ramsey, and was he's uh, nine years old, yeah. and he, when they showed how how a nine year old can hit um, a person's skull, like in that yeah, doc- yeah. doctor, we're getting, yeah, wait, we're getting to that one. We're gonna go to the, the skull stuff. Later. Oh, okay, good. But like, so wait, this episode though, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be focusing on. You know, if he did, like how he did it, okay? How he killed how his he sister, John Bonet, yeah. if he did it. We did other episodes already on Burke where it was basically, uh-huh. you know, talking about, you know, the weird shit that he's done. And it was a lot. It was a lot mm-hmm. of episodes. And this one, so we're going to delve into the different, you know, evidence against him and is the capability there yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And so to start that off, though, we want to get to, it's not really fan mail. It's kind of fan mail. It's fan mail. What is it, Bobby? Is it uh, fan mail? Not uh, fan mail. Uh, Susan Lester has uh, sent us a couple of emails regarding, like, she did a response to the, you know, the, the poll and stuff. And she's Susan. got some, Susan, yeah. And so she uh, specifically responded in regards to our question that we asked at the end of last week's episode, like, are we going to do Burke? Was it Burke? And so she sent an email. It was titled, Was it Burke? No! Exclamation point. Oh, she don't believe it was Burke that killed his sister. Right. What'd she say? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, she says the Burke theory is a collection of observations that make no sense when viewed either singly or together. Singly. Singly. Hey, this man. How's she spell it? S I N G L Y. No, I don't think that's so. singly. Mm. Anywho, well, that's not important. It might so, be right. Details, she puts <laughs> these. Uh, she makes this easy for us. She puts them numbered. All right. So we're gonna start with the first one she gave us. 
If Burke struck and killed John Bonet either intentionally or accidentally, she was still alive with no marks on her body. For all someone looking at her could tell, she could have had a concussion and would have had recovered. The natural thing to do would be to call 911. If Burke had done it intentionally, then John and Patsy could lie and say they both saw it and it was an accident. It would be very difficult for anyone to prove that it was not an accident. It is inconceivable, at least to me, that parents would assume their child was dead and then proceed to strangle her with a cord and fake a kidnapping. Mm. Well, I, it definitely would not be something I would do either. No, mm. but what, I mean, what's going through your mind when that happens? Mm. You know, like you're not thinking clearly. You're, you know, just... And it really depends also on when they find the body. If mm. it was a thing of, like, say Burke did an accident, like, who's to say they witnessed it? Right. Who's to say Burke went and immediately told him? Who's to say Who's that Burke didn't yeah. just go back up to his bedroom and, and lie awake all, all night, you know? Mm, maybe they already found her in that state of rigor mortis, so it's like trying to get her uh -huh. up, and oh my god, her arms are straight out. Yeah. And we don't remember that in Colorado, if a nine-year-old kills some, another person, mm. they will not go to jail. No, but the parents definitely would have. Yes, that the would have been a thing. Mm -hmm. Eat, regardless if they reported or not, mm -hmm. they were going to be charged with something, which is not going to look good for either one of these upstanding community members. It's going to uh -huh. make Burke look terrible. They're going to look at them as monsters, outcasts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to make everything really complicated. Yeah, and we're talking about people who like go to the same dinner parties as the same very same people who are in charge of the the law enforcement and justice department and what have you mm -hmm. in the the area where they live this is not a case where it's like oh uh, uh M michelle pfeiffer and sean penn i am sam too going against a fucking cruel bit of judge played by jason moraz or jason momoa's i mean mm -hmm. uh, jason moraz was not aquaman uh shut up Donna. but basically that they this is instead people who like they probably like grinded and frauded their their dicks to their butts against uh, while they're dancing in country club parties. Wait, oh, oh, it's Ramses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're Ramses. Right, I'm back. The Ramses and the Alex Hunters. They probably like, you know, they they I felt they they probably do stuff. I mean, but they had people in higher places, so yeah, it would be embarrassing. They, they were friends with them. It would least. definitely be embarrassing. So I don't yes. think it's inconceivable, as, as she says. The stakes were high. But and well, I mean, it's a thing in which she says it's inconceivable that they would assume the child's dead and then proceed to strangle with a cord and fake kidnapping. She, There's something I'd like to explore in the way of, you know, maybe they didn't fake it in the way of, yes. as far as, I mean, they, they definitely the ransom, though, but it's there's a case of, you know, they could have been playing with cords and stuff, mm -hmm. but we'll talk about Inconceivable that. Inconceivable in her mind, but not ours. Exactly. So number two, uh -huh. the supposed voices on the 911 call. There's a phenomenon of auditory illusion whereby your brain will think that, that make you think that you hear something that you've been told you should hear. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good YouTube videos on it, but it's basically saying that there's no way to really yeah. trust that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm with that. And too. I think that's a fair thing. I, I think, think it is too. I think you should always keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. You know, and honestly, it wasn't until a more recent episode when we replayed the 911, because we played it a few different times, mm -hmm. that I actually finally truly did hear John Ramsey's voice. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I think it was from a clip of the audio that was from the CBS special. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that, because I because I didn't want to, I didn't want to fall for an audio illusion or not. No, I didn't. You know, in, for my own ears, let yeah. alone anybody else's. It also, it's really hard to understand first place absolutely so, like it's not like good quality audio and it's um, not something i don't hinge the whole case on no those weird voices in there and we I mean, we haven't been like that either it's at the end of the day almost what the only thing it tells me is that patsy ramsey was awake at 5 50 a.m mm -hmm. and you know that's how much i really truly so. think about it that, you know i because i think there is a lot of subjectivity stuff about it mm -hmm. but uh yeah anyway next yeah. one all right well, uh, she also says, you also shouldn't let this violent, mentally ill nine-year-old child go over to play at a friend's house. You would want him with you at all times. In fact, Burke was questioned by police that afternoon without the parents present. Well, we have brought that up before of him being questioned without the present. They didn't uh, give their consent for him. They didn't yeah, know it was, was the lady go. pretended That's to be his grandmother. That's why they wanted him out of the house in the first place, so that mm -hmm. the cops around them mm -hmm. wouldn't try to interview him. Which honestly could have been argued that that interview is inadmissible, too. But right, Which I exactly. believe. But also, it's a thing of, like, number one, if they're trying to pretend, like, if, if they're just referencing that morning uh, if that's what they're saying or they're just talking about playing in general uh, i think it's a thing where number one they would always try to ignore that and he's not a violent i mean mentally ill he's definitely mentally ill but like who is it he's you know like i guess they are talking about after the murder then if that's what she's gonna say but it's a thing of i w i mean you're gonna pretend that he's not this whole thing is hinging you make this whole two and a half page right. ransom note to be like he's not we know he can act normal enough because he's done it for nine years up until now mm -hmm. but he can do this you know for the morning so yeah you would let him do it especially when it looks better and you don't want him to be interviewed by the police yeah and honestly i don't even think it needs to say i mean yes he's got his quirks and we all do but i don't necessarily like i don't i don't hinge any any idea that i may have that he could have done it off of that either because i also just think about 
a young, young, young boys, young men at that age where sometimes they, they jump and they, 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 they land on and they break a bone or sometimes they're just a little bit too, they roughhouse too much, mm. you know, or they're just a little bit, they punch a little too hard. They don't realize that they're growing, you know? Yeah. Where, where I, where I, you know, strength. there's moments where, and even like, I think something like an accident. Or something where it's like, oh, if he hit Jamine in the head with a flashlight, then like, that only takes a second to do. Yeah. It could be a moment where he just oh, like oh, got you know, got possessed by you know just a little bit too much of a of an anger or whatever. Exactly. And then I think that happened. I think everybody hits that moment. Can you times. imagine if he did it again? They send him over the White House and it's like, oh my God, you know. Our kids got hit too, and it's like, oh my god, they're how many people? Too. Yeah, yeah, there's even a trail of it, like the skittles. Can you imagine if he got left back at the house though? Like maybe what the fear was is like he's just gonna throw me off. Like we're yeah. trying to act, like yeah. just seeing him around walking around with a Game Boy, like Patsy's trying to be all distraught. Burt keeps coming in the room. He's like, I'm hungry. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a racing game. It's like okay, you gotta race to, yeah. to Costco. Uh huh. Like Burt wants um, peanut butter pretzels. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm gonna kill ya. <laughs> So no, ah. it's number three. No, I don't really. No, I mean, I mean, it's again. That's I'm making the assumption that yeah. you know, yeah, he I, is a. I, you I know. appreciate. I, I like going through these though. Yeah, I do too. Uh, so number four, the final one on here is the pineapple, which was not just pineapple. Paula Woodward reproduces in her book pages from the DA's summary of the case that analyzes show that analyzes showed that cherries and grapes were also present. JB ate a fruit cocktail and not the pineapple from the bowl. In addition, the partially digested food was in her small intestine, not her stomach, which means she could have eaten it hours before. She certainly did not pop some pineapple in her mouth and immediately get killed by Burke. Um, I don't think okay. that's true based on, you know. What... I don't think anybody's really saying that. Well, and also the thing is, is like, if she's going to say Paula Woodward, like, we're going off the coroner's report where it's a yellowish substance, not a fruit cocktail with, like, bread and stuff. Uh -huh. it's, we went off the coroner's report showing, you know, a yellowish substance that resembles pineapple. Is Paul what they Woodward said. goes on speaking tours with from John the district Ramsey. And she goes from the, also from the pages of the book, from the DA's summary. Exactly. So the district attorneys, because it's like they're actively working against each other to disprove yeah. theories. It's like, it's like, it's like money laundering by like three degrees, mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, we launder it here, and then we take it over here, and we launder it there. It's information laundering. And it's like, I don't believe, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't believe in the credibility of the DA's report, considering the DA said in front of the FBI and Steve Thomas mm -hmm. that whether or not he would bring charges against these parents would be a political matter. Right, right, right. And that's why the FBI stopped collaborating with them the next day and why Steve Thomas then uh, 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 resigned uh, a couple weeks later on JonBenet, on the, on JonBenet's birthday. Right. And, but so we can't trust he, them with the pineapple information. No, but, so then, but then Paula Woodward, Woodward yeah. she, she tours with John Ramsey. Mm -hmm. like, she is kind of his uh, bulldog sort of... Um, um, she does most of the talking. Higher credibility sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She, uh, Cotton Star posted one of uh, the interviews with him and her at a convention recently. Oh. So you can kind of see what they do. And again, in, it was interesting that with Kat, we talked to last episode, talks about how they were all in a Zoom room getting ready for the live Q&A at a crime con for John. And then right before the event started, they all got kicked out and they could only watch the recording. Oh my gosh. tells me that like the Ramsey's PR people were like, this is live on the internet. Yeah. And we don't know what's going to happen. We can't have a live clip of John getting questioned to you know, uh -huh. somebody screaming like, God forbid, nope. it's not rehearsed. Just it's edited. not something that's already written. Oh, it is rehearsed. People. It is rehearsed. Yeah. They, well, that's the thing. They didn't want it not rehearsed right, because right. like the Paul oh, Woodward, would. John Ramsey, Torn Show. I don't know what Jenna said, die. Ba -da -ba -ba. Torn <laughs> Show. <laughs> They do, a, they like, do a comedy act. Yeah, she, I mean, it's like it is like two marionettes, <laughs> and I and also I think they're gonna be together at the crime con in Tennessee. They are, they are. And I and so everybody can see for themselves. One, if they if they if they if they stream any of it, will the questions part be um, quieted? Will it be will it be you know? What is the word they probably won't live stream it, but we're gonna try to get in. But so. you know, they probably won't. But like, let's see. But what, on that, know. but still, and then on the pineapple, the last point she had made was that so, the, mm -hmm. it was within. Uh, I don't edit this out if this is wrong, but I'm very confident it was within an hour and a half. So that means that when she ate it, that could have been within an hour and a half of her. Not immediately after. And it's the thing of it. It's also not saying the, the. Remember, the initial head injury didn't necessarily kill her right off the bat. So mm -hmm. it's a thing of you know she could have. We don't know how long she was laying there before the physical. And died. we don't know but where we know, it happened. It, but it, we also know that the Ramses have a put on her gravestone. You know, she died on December 26th, or December 25th. 
Oh yeah, they did. So they put it so it's they, the Ramses put it like it's before midnight. Like it was before midnight, what? which no one else is really. But out. it's but it even and it, and and sometimes I also hear like, well, what if it was more about like symbolic? Like they knew that John Bonet loved Christmas and it, sure. and it's almost like some weird sort of like. Yeah, but that would be a weird thing to be. But like, that's the thing. She loved Christmas every but Christmas. That, like, like, oh, like, sorry. Uh, then th that's the thing. Like th that's there's only two answers. Either they knew that she died before midnight, or that they didn't, but they thought it was more. Um, it was more Poignant. attractive, mm. and 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 it was more uh, Jesus -y, Jesus -y too. Manicured. Mm. Jesus, Jesus birthday, yes. her death. That yeah, if it's more of a certain very story. Much, yeah. So then it's like, well, I don't know. What are the better? What is the better of um, you know, the, of, of positions for them to be in? Mm. Like, I'm like one makes them look smarmy and, and 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 evil, and the other one looks makes them look evil and stupid. And then also still on the pineapple, the thing that Patsy's commented on it. We'll put the clip in here. Of her talking about like her refuting the pineapple point. And this is I'm sure before Paula Woodward was, uh, you know, helping them out and shit. But her clip, which I'll play right here. Well, I've not specifically read the autopsy report, but it is my understanding that they are not definitive about whether the substance in her digestive system was pineapple or not. All I'm saying is that I did not feed her pineapple when we returned home from the White's house. She was sound asleep. She was put in her bed and tucked in good night. So, yeah, that's how Patsy described it. But she doesn't say anything about a fruit cocktail at that point. <clears throat> and, and it's like, you know, I think it's just muddying the shit because it's making it look like, oh, no, we're arguing about what color fruit was in the bowl or, or what she ate versus like, actually, I think it's more about when was the time and the location. Mm -hmm. Of John Benet, John Benet being attacked because exactly. she almost, it almost, and I don't even know she's know she's doing this. Mm -hmm. It's just us, if like you know, this is us having a fair exchange of ideas mm -hmm. and conversation, and we appreciate, but because it helps us even look at the matter even more and right. and ask the question right. of ourselves. Right. Because I'm just I'm being open minded. Yeah, absolutely. And also that was another Patsy doing the whole. Uh, I haven't seen the coroner's report, but. I've been told, or we've been told, yeah. so that's yeah. another one of those instances that they always fucking do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Susan, we really, we really appreciate you reaching out. Uh, we'd you, love Susan. to eventually talk to you on there. She's got some other theories that we need to go back in and look, but this one was relevant to today's very episode. Very smart lady, very smart yeah. lady, Good very question. thoughtful and yeah. things. Mm -hmm. She's, uh, she said other, they've had other podcasts that have discussed her. Her theory. Uh, oh, that's but good. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna look into that. So, the Susan uh, theory. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, uh, we're going to take a quick break for a second. We'll yeah. be right back. All right, we just want to take a quick Ooh. break to give a shout out of this. Uh, want to shout it out. This week's uh, producer of our episode of the Killing It in All Aspects member. Mr. I think we all know who. Mr. Rogers Powers. Rogers Powers, you power me up. Yeah. You take me from power bottom to power top. Nope. Can't do that. No, oh, no well. we appreciate you so much. I mean, and like in a battery. If you want to, you know, uh, support us, you <laughs> can go to the uh, patreon.com slash Jumbinate today. I'm energized. T-O-D-E-T. I'm electrified yes. by you, and Mr. Rogers Powers. Yes. And I'm so thankful and grateful for your patronage Eternally. at our Patreons Absolutely. of John Bonet today, mm -hmm. TLDA Day. Thank you, everybody. And if you join our Patreon, you too get to get a special shout out from us. Like, I think that's a really well, special thing. not just that, but yeah. I mean, you get some things. You get some things. We get, Teddy, Don Teddy sends you weird stuff in the mail if you give us your shipping Locks of Donna's hey. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. If you want some hair, some people love hair. A lot hair. of it gets stopped some in transit, so you probably won't get it. But. In some cultures, hair is seen as the greatest. Uh, 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 he uses our chat on there to legally communicate with people. Yeah. yeah. Some websites, you can only play them in hair. Okay. Well, that's enough. We're going to go back to the show. All right. All right, and we're back from a little break. Oh, and I so need that break. What I, what I want to do, I want to do something special with you guys. We're going to do like a little thing where oh. I want to present, you know, Burke's case, the case towards, you know, he did it. The case of Burke Ramsey. But like, you know, like a courtroom kind of thing, you know? Oh, yeah. So you guys are going to play roles, okay? okay. All right, I'm going to be oh. the prosecution, all right? Teddy, you're the defense. You're the executioner. N I'm the defense. No, prosecutioner. Okay. Prosecutor. Prosecutor. Prosecution. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Pro okay. Pros I'm the one going after Burke. No. No. Donna's the prostitution. Well, no. Donna was going to be the judge, but I'm not sure if she's. Are you up for it? Huh? Can you be the judge? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So there we go. Okay. So, so yeah. we got a judge. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, well, who can be the judge? Well, 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 how about we get your neighbors? We'll knock on some doors. For what? We'll, we gotta get a jury. Bobby. Oh shit. Uh, we could do both. Damn it. There we go. Yeah. Well, Donna just do both. do both. That means you gotta listen extra hard. 
Okay. You got to be focused. Okay. Right, okay. All right. Right. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's go All ahead right. and let's do it. That yeah, sounds so, good. So, uh, Teddy, what we'll do is we'll just let the defense, you know, give your opening remarks, you know, to the jury. And then I'm not going to do opening remarks. I'm just going to launch into it. So you feel free to interject after. But okay. Go right ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, court is now in session. Honorable Judge uh, Donna Barnaby. I'm just going to call you Barnaby. Honorable Judge Barnaby. I haven't called that in a while. There you go. She's oh, Judge Barnaby. Judge Barnaby. Judge Barnaby. Honorable hey. Judge Barnaby. All right. Uh, here we go. Uh, the Court of Public Opinion featuring the Honorable Judge Barnaby. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are you sweating your taints off in this hot courtroom too? <laughs> That's just my usual Southern charm. I'm Scott Peterson, defense attorney for Mr. Brent Robigan. Uh, Ramsey's, uh, the, the prosecutorial team's gonna try to paint my client as a, a sister killer. They're gonna, wait, as a sister killer. They're gonna try to paint young Burke Ramsey as a sister killer, as a sister molester, as a sister sister. Now it's a TM Tamara Maori sitcom that I saw on, on WB the other day. But they're going to try to do that, too, and many other things. And I want you all to know, ma'am, that it is not true. And that with every, with every, with every uh, uh, character uh, assassinating type of, of claim that they make, that this young man, brilliant in a Temple Grandin kind of way, <laughs> is not the, the, the killer and and a uh, uh, um, villain that the 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 state seems to think. Is that all, counsel? Hey, yes, ma'am. Mr. Peterson here is going to use a lot of flashy words like sister killer and sister killer, and so are we. He's uh, you know really just bringing it home for us. We want you guys to be thinking about this sister killer, sister killer. It's a great technique. Thank you, counsel, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, what was it, Scott Peterson? Was this the Scott Peterson? Dr. Scott Peterson, Dr. De Silva Esquire. Well, at least you got a, at least you got a backup career. Uh, what we are going to do here is we are going to paint a picture here. A picture of a young, disturbed, little shit monster that most likely killed his sister. And we're going to tell you exactly how it happened. Objection! To what? Sustained. What you, all right. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that by the evidence that we have. We are going to paint a picture here using the hard facts, the crime scene, okay? And we're gonna start with the possibility that young Burke here was very much awake that night by his own admission. I think that the 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 young gentleman from uh, Chansey is is advocating the case that's a little bit too big for his britches. <laughs> No Is that all? <laughs> no, I want to present my case if it pleases you. He if it pleases hard the court. facts like it's hard If it pains. pleases the court. So I want to lay down how I think it could have gone down, all right? Based on the evidence, if that's all right with you, counsel. The evidence will, the truth will set you free. Okay. Counsel. All right. Well, your client on December 25th had noted that that morning, him and his sister played Nintendo in his room, waited for the parents to wake up. Wasn't uncommon for them to hang out in Burke's room and play together. They played in the Nintendo system, which, you know, he had got a Nintendo 64 for Christmas, so they hadn't gotten the new one yet, but they were still, you know, playing together. That's a thing they do, all right? So it's not unheard of that maybe they got together that night to play Burke's new Nintendo 64. Maybe both the parents are sound asleep, okay? Maybe they want to go downstairs and get a snack. Maybe they want to look at Burke's presents that they have not opened yet. Burke's birthday was coming up. Is that is that not right, counsel? As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> I think. Do I have the story right so far, possibly? Who else hasn't been a child playing Nintendo uh, the morning of Christmas and the night of Christmas, potentially? But there is no evidence, there's no proof to show that John Bonet was in Burke's room. She was all over the house, so there was no way to prove that she wasn't in his room on Christmas night. But... We do have the account of Burke, your father, bringing you to bed with a flashlight, possibly, possibly not. 
Either way, you don't remember if you snuck down with a flashlight. Is that correct? <laughs> Get your client under control. Murder. 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 I got this. My client does not remember if he had a flashlight or not. When he went downstairs to check on his presence, that may have been presents that he were received for him. I'm sorry, you're saying your client went to go check on presents <gasps> under the record? Because he <sighs> thought he went down to check a toy, play with a toy that he, you know, that he had already previously worked on. All the toys were, all of my, all the toys, all the gifts were open for my, my, my client. Uh, Christmas was the day before. Uh, well, we'll get to that, counsel, and that's not true. We just mentioned his birthday was no. coming up. Uh. But, so they maybe go downstairs. Burke's pillow was in the kitchen, and we know this through looking through crime scene photos. Every bed has two pillows, except for young Burke's. So for some reason, that's sitting in the kitchen, counsel. You know, near the mag light that it has also been proven could have uh, caused the head injury. Who here hasn't had a time where they wanted to lay there and rest their head on a kitchen floor with a pillow? And maybe pillows sometimes through the process of excalcifications. Which is a uh, objection, Your Honor. I don't think that. Use that actually, in a sentence. The 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 pillow is scaltified um, to the kitchen. Please be more clear. <laughs> Definition Counsel. is when something is is, is swept up by a, is swept up by a breeze <laughs> and travels its way down the stairs from a bedroom. <laughs> so you saying that a breeze swept that pillow downstairs, Counsel? Objection. To what? I'm asking you a question. Oh, uh, yes, excaltrified. That, it, it, in layman's terms, yes, a breeze. Okay, so, well, we've painted the picture so far that they've made it down to the kitchen with the pillow. Maybe JonBenet's there, maybe she's not, okay? But the neighbors do recount seeing flashlights in the kitchen, you know, around that midnight-ish. It could have been a disco ball. Uh, Many homes had them in Denver where disco was objection, uh, objection, Your Honor. That's not true. That's just simply not true. Who uh, disco here balls has were not, not had is the a 90s disco ball of. in their kitchen? Oh, and, and Your Honor, so they made it to the kitchen. Maybe Burke makes himself a snack for him and his sister. It was a rather large amount of pineapple, okay? And, and, and defendants, you know, his prints were on the bowl, okay? Oh, Burke, I will you have this pineapple you made me? Counsel, you want to keep your client under control? <laughs> <laughs> Bert, shut up! Stop lying! Bert, stop! Uh, let the let the jury note that uh, the the client seems to be having some sort of weird flashback out loud to the moment of of uh, possible murder. Bert, you're taller than me. Okay. Well, yes, guys, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have a recess. This uh, is all on the record. A recess. He's gonna go to recess. No, this is a perfect time. I'm still in the middle of presenting my case to the jury. Here. Uh, well, then present your case, counsel. All right. So they made it to the kitchen. They're playing around with flashlights, right? All right. Maybe Bert gets curious because he's got you know presents down in the basement. You know, he's still got a birthday coming up. Maybe he wants to look at him. Maybe John Bonet goes with him. Look at maybe his presents, and and the evidence will show that there was a present that was open that belonged to your client. I'm going to open it, Burke. There we go. I'll let the record note that Burke is again having another out loud recollection of those nights. I'm going to open it. Uh, yeah, and he probably was like, you better not, you know. God, it's hot. It's fine. And uh, so, you know, she does open it. It turns out it was his present. You know, she ruined the surprise. It wasn't something else big that maybe he was expecting, but now he doesn't have the whimsy and wonder of opening it, you know, a few days later. Am I here flapping my arms like a chicken <laughs> with my thumbs in my overall straps to be led to believe that John Benet, the precious little dead little girl angel, would have been so thoughtless to open her, her brother's present while her brother was maybe... Be in some other area, like maybe going to a bathroom and taking a poop. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because there was fresh poop found in the bathroom of the basement. Let the record show that the, uh, in the, the counsel house. for the defense is placing his client in the basement, possibly at the time. Yes, there was a rather large turd down there. Oh, uh, you know, but... You it's know. ridiculous to think that that's Brett Ramsey's turd. Wait, I'm not doing the voice. It, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Southern drawl. <laughs> Southern drawl. It's ridiculous. Southern drawl. Dude. And so I, I I propose that, you know, in a fit of anger, for, and they're playing around there with flashlights, mm -hmm. John Bonet attempted to run out the room, and Burke struck her over the head with such force that rendered her unconscious. 
Your I, Honor. I do not believe. <laughs> My God. <laughs> going. We're going to keep like, going. So this is not. I don't think so. I didn't think you just said Q and A. It's, yeah, not, yeah. it's kangaroo court, and this is how we're doing it. Yeah, terrible, like fucking. I gotta keep the accent. <laughs> all right, yeah. so mm -hmm. the evidence will also show. We will highlight it with Exhibit A, the urine stain that is just outside the door of the basement, the wine cellar where John Benet's body was found, right here, just outside the door where the paintbrush is, is the urine stain, indicating that was the possible point of contact. She gets hit, falls face down, pisses herself. Happens to all of us. But it's that's it's. Model. But am I to be led to believe that? The presents were being held in the wine cellar Absolutely. next to little girl's pee. Your client's mother had been wrapping presents all the night before. So, yes, you all had to believe that. That means it was even more fresh. So we know that that was just recently placed down there, which means it was open sometime after Christmas. Because she was wrapping presents the day of. Patsy. Your client opens it up, you know, mm -hmm. hits her, all right? Mm -hmm. And now here's where we get into a little bit of supposition, Jerry. I want you to just, you know, be open-minded with us here. Because this is where it could get a little different. Don't open Young your Bert, mind so far your head spills out. Because now some people would like you to believe that maybe the parents, you know, found the body, but yeah. maybe Burke went and told them immediately. I doubt that. I, I believe they would have maybe, you know, as God-fearing people, sought the proper help for their daughter. But if they find it later, they wouldn't, uh, it's a thing of, you know, if she's got rigor mortis, it's already set in, her arms are all stiff and shit, it's kind of weird. You're like, oh, she's already dead. So maybe then they would cover it up. So it's the thing of this, you're going to say that they uh, possibly uh, placed a garrote on the client, you know, and covered it up. Or did Burke Ramsey, nine-year-old, have the capability to also tie knots on his sister? Possibly drag her into the other room, as the urine stain indicates, as there was a slight smear to indicate that the body was dragged. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, right to piss. Allow it. Can I keep going while <laughs> counsel's out of the <laughs> Can I keep going while counsel's out of the room? Keep going. I'll be right. I'll be right back. <laughs> I was gonna miss a good pop, but the paint tray was also covering a urine stain, indicating that the parents, uh, you know, if they were to go through a big part of the cover-up, such as writing the ransom note, which is what I believe, uh, they would have also taken the time to possibly clean up a urine stain. Maybe that little shit monster didn't tell them about the urine stain. I object. I, was I object. Back. I am. I wait. I'm object. Yes. Objection. Sustained. On what grounds? On the grounds of. Uh, being uh, uh, things that we're not supposed to talk about. Well, we've got your facts out of mind. And another thing, oh, sorry, Honor, it is hot in here. You keep a hot court. I said it's fine. Oh, well, you'll get your chance in just a second here. I'm almost finished here, here, counsel. If you just bear with me here, we're still on, you know, December 26th. So you mean tell me that John Bonet opened up the Legos, uh, unwrapped them, and the client hit her in the head with a mag light in the boiler room. Mm -hmm. And, and the evidence and was she so... pissed herself and he moved her in a position. And maybe he used his, my client used his not making jury rigging duties talents to create his own cover up <laughs> that later his parents discovered. And maybe cover up off of that or came, you know, learn that their little shit monster didn't tell him everything. And there's still some things, and that's why they try to hide him from the public, because he was the one who hit his sister in the head, which was what led to her having to be killed or left for dead uh, and, and rigored and mortised uh, and Siskel and Ebert did. I, uh, I absolutely could have said it better myself, counsel, but I do appreciate that. Yes, that is what we are trying to say. Oh, God, I did it again! <laughs> <laughs> and we also have that his client's footprint to his high-tech boot was located in that room. It has been matched to him initially. They tried to deny it. My the client clients, only uses low tech. The client's pocket knife, to which we have previously noted the housekeeper had always said she'd seen around whittling. She had to take it away from him. Was also found near the body. What's he supposed to put in his pocket? Bacon? That's absolutely absurd, and people that do that should stop doing it because they're starting to smell. I put bacon in my pocket. Teddy, you're not in the courtroom. We have the paint tray that's covering up the urine stains. We have your client's pocket knife in there. We have, we have the client's present that has recently been opened. The capability with the flashlight that has been proven could have caused such force, but not enough force to where it was bleeding. And then him moving the body, not telling his parents about the urine stain. He had the ability, he was in Boy Scouts, he could tie a knot, and possibly he covered it up, you know? Well, that would be quite the fanciful explanation of 
things based off of tangible facts. Well, Your Honor, I believe that uh, we have both presented our cases, I guess. Uh, do hmm. you have a verdict? Huh? Do, Donna, got it. Which way, Your you Honor, ju the Honorable Judge Barnaby. Who's Donna? The Honorable, oh, now she's in case. Oh, God, now she's dissociating. She oh, always God. fucking does this when we play court. Do you have a verdict? Uh, guilty or not guilty? In the court of public Judge. opinion. Mm, maybe. Fantastical. Maybe. I wasn't convinced enough either way. You wasn't convinced? You weren't, you weren't even paying attention, Your Honor. Your, 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 I mean, uh, Your Honor, I think... I uh, was working on my cuticles, but that does not mean that I was not listening. This is kangaroo court. It's the, this court, is of, sham. It's the court of public opinion. Come on, Brent. I, <laughs> that little shit monster out Now, you leave him out of here. Ah! No, Brent, 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 Brent. Put him back in his hole. All right, all right. Where it right. belongs. A jank. Order. This concludes the Court of Public Opinion. If you'd like to have your case heard on the Court of Public Opinion, then you're probably stupid and don't realize you're watching this in syndication. It was stupid to me. Wow. <clears throat> Bobby, I gotta admit something. Yeah, what's up? I really thought I was more talented than I think. <laughs> I really don't think, I, I think there is a ceiling. For me. <laughs> oh. Like it's very humbling. Mm -hmm. to think, mm -hmm. I mean, like I mean, I mean let's other people think otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Teddy? I don't. You know, it's whatever. So uh, Teddy got to listen to that because we are re-recording yeah. our outro for this because uh, we all just happened to be here on the day that we were putting this up, anyways. Yeah. And yeah. also because we wanted to comment from uh, Susan from earlier got back to us. Susan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. We appreciate it, you. It's she, just, it, I, she I was. I'm, a, I'm blown away. I just gotta say, like, she's just so smart. Yeah, she's and great. And she's been, you know, she's been doing this for a supportive. long time. And it's, I like it because it's a lot of the viewpoints that we've heard back from are people that have responded as I was a child around this time. Uh, she was a mother around this time. She was a mother. Mm -hmm. A so mother's it's an entirely perspective. entirely different perspective, you know? Uh, and so, but uh, she responded. We wanted to get her on the show. And so we thought we were, had it recorded before. But she heard it. She wrote back around this. And we want to get her on again still. Uh, but she said there's uh, so many things wrong with the Burke theory. I really feel sorry for him. His entire life has been shaped by his sister's murder. Can you imagine having over 150 podcasters talk about you smearing poop around the house when you were a child? And, uh, it's a, I mean, it's a really good yeah. one. <clears throat> Andre? Yeah. Don't smear poop when you were a child. Oh, no, I don't know if that's the lesson. I feel bad, you guys. Now I feel really bad. <laughs> Do you feel bad? Maybe I'm really thinking about it now. And, I mean, I really wish we didn't, I, didn't, I wish we hadn't made this episode. <laughs> Yeah. I really, because I feel like now, I feel like Bram, Ramsey's, he might, he might, like, he deserves to, like, you know, like, have a, a peace of life and privacy and, and be in peace. Unless, of course, he was the instigator behind his sister's untimely de demise. That's true. Which is, that's the thing. If we could get down to the bottom of it, we could rule him out completely. Mm -hmm. But too much stuff was brought up on this episode tonight, especially during this terrible courtroom drama. <laughs> <laughs> It Don't was worry, like, you know, Ali McBeal, it's more like, uh, burn me. And it was just too much of, uh, there was too, there's just too many facts. There's too many points of evidence that we just need to, we can't clear him. No, we can't. I think those presented a pretty good case. Uh, but so, but I mean, but you still feel bad about, you know. I mean, you know, if I want to take the Scott Peterson point of view and say that Brooke's innocent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then that's a choice I could make. Yeah. But. Everything I've seen, the information as of this date of the year 2024, shortly around the eclipse, the last eclipse we're going to see in our lifetimes, mm -hmm. a time where the light penetrates the darkness, mm -hmm. that I suspect it might have been an accident involving the little Ramsey boy. What's his name? Burke. Ramsey. Burke. Yes, Burke. Burke. I think it very well could have been. But you know what? We know he didn't write the note, though. No, he did not write the note. He I did not. Write, he, there's no way he wrote that note. Himself. Patsy wrote that note. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's and that's what we pretty much determined in the Patsy uh, part two one. Oh, and uh, so, but you Many know, parts to Patsy. So we got we got more coming up with that though. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so, I'm sorry. And, and in the case we're wrong, and in, in the case I, you know, my my suspicion mm -hmm. is is incorrect. <laughs> yeah, then Brent Ramsey, I'm I'm so sorry. Yeah, Teddy, I, think I, I apologize. Know why he's really I'm apologizing. Heart. Uh, so we're not doing our normal outro here tonight. Uh, Teddy's got a song. Yeah, so, I do. It's a. Um, it's I'm inspired. Then he might feel bad about it now. But let's uh, let's let's play this out. All right. So thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you, everybody. We love you very much. I love you. <laughs> not Donna though.
when you was here before If I look at you on the stage You're just like an angel Mama likes you better You're a beautiful girl I wish I was special You're so fucking special But I'm just Burke I'm the weirdo what the hell is Mac like doing here? I told you to stand clear. Don't care if you're worried. I wanna have controls. I wanna doctor your body. You got a non cancerous mole. I told you no presents when I'm not around. So fucking special, but now I'll be special. But birds are free. I'm a shit monster. What the hell does Mag like going here? I told you to stand clear. Oh, oh, she's running down the Runways was fun. It was so fucking special. Maybe now I'll be special. Something like that.